welcome back to the end time remnant youtube channel this is dorothy i pray all of you are blessed and doing well on tonight today is september 22nd 2023 it's um, probably a little bit before 6 p.m where i am and on this particular video i wanted to encourage you to expect the unexpected okay i want you to remember that god can use anyone for his purposes to bless you and most times it won't be who you expected. If you have your Bible or cell phone and you want to follow along with me in scripture, I am reading from the book of John chapter 19, 38 through 42. Again, John chapter 19 verses 38 through 42. And it reads, after this, Joseph of Arimathea being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Okay, so this particular passage of scripture is talking about the burial of Jesus. And before I go any further, it is important to note that the Bible tells us that there was only one disciple of Jesus Christ who was at the foot of the cross when he was crucified, and that was John. Everyone else had run away because they were in fear for their lives. Okay, so now that we have that established, let's talk about Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Okay, these men were actually Pharisees who followed Jesus' teachings secretly. And the reason they followed his teaching secretly is because Jesus' gospel of love rooted in personal relationship, right, challenged the hardcore religion being taught by the Pharisees during that time. Okay, Joseph of Arimathea was actually a prominent and well-respected member of the council, otherwise known as the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish high court. He was, he was definitely a Pharisee. So people knowing that he actually followed Jesus Christ would have been quite the scandal. Okay, so that's why he did it secretly. Joseph of Arimathea was also a wealthy man. Okay, and he stepped forward at a very critical time to boldly ask Pontius Pilate for Jesus' body in order to give him a proper burial. Okay, the Bible also tells us that Nicodemus, who was also a Pharisee, brought about a hundred pounds of aloe and myrrh mixture. I'm driving home all of these details because it's important for us to note that this was all very expensive. This was a costly burial. Okay, but these two wealthy men were determined to show Jesus Christ the love and honor that he so deserved. Again, they were Pharisees. Okay, so let's put this all in perspective. The people closest to Jesus, right? I'm specifically talking about the 12 disciples. Okay, they scattered. These were the people Jesus did ministry with for three years. These were the people he broke bread with. Right? These are the people he ate with. He talked, he laughed, he joked, he spent a lot of time with these people during his earthly ministry for three years. These were the people present to see the miracles, the signs, the wonders. These were the people who saw him walk on water. <laughs> these were the people he personally chose to follow him. These were the people he picked, he handpicked these people. These were the people whose feet he humbly washed at the Last Supper. None of these folks were there to help bury him. None of them. Yet here you have these Pharisees, Joseph and Nicodemus, there, front and center, 
ready for prime time because his burial meant something to them. They wanted it to be done right. They were there to show bravery, love, grace, and honor to the Lord at a time where his closest followers were nowhere around. The revelation I believe you and I are to take from this powerful passage of scripture is that we must never forget that God knows who and what you need at the appointed time. Okay, even when you are abandoned by those closest to you, God can raise up the least likely person at the right time to help you. Our job isn't to worry about the specifics of who was there for us in our times of need and who wasn't right. Don't get caught. Don't get caught up in all of that. What we're supposed to be doing is having the faith in God to provide all that we need at any given time using whichever vessel he chooses to use. Okay, so if the person the Lord sends is a complete stranger, so be it. So be it. If the person he sends to help you is a blast from the past, someone who actually at one time or another betrayed or hurt you, so be it. Proverbs 16, 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Don't get caught up in who God sends to help you. Okay, just rest in the fact that he can send anyone because he's sovereign and he knows all. In my own personal walk, God has used the least likely people to bless me over the years. I have given my testimony a million and one times. Um, The Lord called me out of my corporate position almost seven years ago. You hear what I say? I have not worked in seven years and the Lord has used the least likely people to bless me financially over the years. And I truly believe it's because he wanted me to get out of the mindset that my help had to come from a particular place. He wanted me to learn how to expect the unexpected and trust that no matter how it got done or who he used to do it, it would be done. My needs would be met because of his faithfulness and I didn't really need to get involved in the details of how he was going to do it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Okay, God's resources are infinite. It's us who typically have these one track minds about how a thing can be accomplished and who we can count on for help. And I just come tonight to let you know um, that I've experienced my very own Joseph of Arimathea. Okay, someone I was not necessarily the closest to, but someone who loved me, had a heart for the Lord, and above all else was obedient to the Lord's prompting to bless me financially. So I am encouraging you to expect the unexpected, be open to however the Lord wants to bless you in this new season. Reject any and all limitations in your mind about how this next miracle is going to show up. You hear what I say? Don't worry about who's going to do it. Just trust that you serve a God who's going to get it done. All right. I pray that you were blessed by the message and God willing, I will see you next time.